so I'm still working on this NCR computer. In the previous video in this series I had the logic analyzer attached and uh, we were getting a very strange uh, set of problems with this and we're trying to boot from floppy disk and uh, using the logic analyzer we could see that the correct data was coming from the floppy disk it, the correct data was being applied to the DRAM but when we tried to read that data back it didn't all read back correctly. Now the video I showed was actually edited down from probably four or five hours of footage and um, I tried to edit it down to give as many clues as I could as to what I thought might be causing the problem and uh, I had the advantage of course that I'd done a lot more testing um, but what I was kind of leaning towards was either initially I thought it was a, not the right um, floppy disk and it was the wrong boot disk but uh, as we saw in the previous video the data um, coming out of it uh, matched perfectly with what the um, the ROM was trying to search for. So it seemed to be the right disk, it was just failing at that test because the wrong data was coming out of the DRAM even though the correct data uh, was written to the DRAM and the address applied was correct. Um, but this is where things kind of get a, a little bit strange that um, the address we were looking at for applying the data to the um, DRAM the probes were all on the first DRAM for the address lines um, but the address lines are all common across all the DRAMs it's only the data in and data out pins that are separate and that got me thinking that the addresses we were seeing the issue for um, address at 2000 hex 2001, 2002 and 2003 were correct. The data coming out was what it should be. But at 2004 the data coming out was wrong. And if you think about it that means that um, address bits 1 and 2 must have been doing what they should have been doing but possibly the next address line wasn't right. So that's address line 2. So I started thinking that maybe not all the address lines were connected to all of the devices. I tried using a scope to look at all the address lines and they did all seem to be toggling but um, the signal levels on this board are fairly poor anyway and it's a bit um, misleading with the DRAMs like this because if the pins are not connected you will get da uh, data kind of coming out of them as kind of ghost values because of the way the uh, internal circuitry of the DRAM works. So I was seeing data on uh, all of them, but it didn't really look right. Um, so what I decided to do was uh, completely remove uh, all the DRAMs. Four of them were still soldered to the board. And when I removed them, um, the issue became clear. And it did actually confirm what I thought may have been going on, but not exactly where. Uh, so when I took out, you would have noticed that four of the devices were in sockets, the first four and the last four were soldered to the board still. But when I took the last four out, I noticed that um, one of the tracks between two of the devices, that's between the fourth um, DRAM and the fifth one, was missing completely. It just wasn't there at all and it obviously hadn't been there for a while because there was some black corrosion around the through-hole plating, so, or whether, rather where the through-hole plating should have been. So clearly it's been like that for some time. And um, that connection was on pin 6 of the DRAM. And pin 6 is address line 2. And that's exactly lined up with um, what we were seeing in that the, the address that seemed to be incorrect would be incorrect if address line 2 wasn't being toggled for certain of the devices. So what it meant was that um, the lower four bits, the, the um, DRAM closest to us is bit naught, and this uh, one furthest away of course is um, bit 7. Um, the first four were connected, so the lower nibble of the data coming out would be correct because the address um, that we're selecting was correct. But because that was expected to be zero, we couldn't really see much. Um, the upper nibble um, wasn't connected, address line 6 wasn't connected because it's kind of daisy chained through them. So because there was a break, in fact there was a break between the next two as well, 
um, or that was a through hole plate failure rather than a missing track. So what I did um, is go through them all, buzz them all out. I actually found several of the through hole plates were open circuits on the first three devices. So I repaired those. What I do is um, desolder them, suck all the solder out, put a fine wire through the hole, solder it on the top, put the socket back in, solder it on the underside and that fixes the problem. I did have to fit two short jumpers between pins 4 and 5 and 5 and 6 and um, I then put in a brand new set of DRAMs, uh, powered it up and the display was then blank. So um, the machine did pass the cell test so I didn't think it was um, necessarily faulty DRAM. So there's a video controller chip on here and some RAM on the video board as well. And um, fairly quickly found an open circuit via on here. There wasn't um, any strobe lines, any strobe appearing at the uh, controller chip. So I quickly traced that back and found an open circuit via. So I repaired that, it was down here. So I repaired that, plugged it back together. And um, if we now power this up, So self-test is passing. I haven't reattached the logic analyzer yet, um, but the self-test pass and we're now getting the disk not ready um, indication on the screen. So I'll move the camera across. So as you can see, we've got the startup message on the screen and the uh, drive door is open. So I booted the machine up with the drive door open. And if you recall, when we did this previously, when I then closed the drive door and hit the enter key, the machine crashed. So we'll see what it does now. I'll close the drive door. I'll hit the enter key. And as you can see, it now boots up and we can access the floppy disk contents. So the system's running. It's um, now doing what it's supposed to and uh, it looks like we may have resolved the issue we were having with the floppy drive system and the DRAM. So let's move the camera back. Okay so the problem was with the DRAM hopefully now the um, issues we saw and the data we saw in the previous video make more sense. Um, I was going through it in a particular um, fashion specifically to try and track down this sort of problem so I tend to go through it in a fairly methodical way and that's because usually you can track down the problem relatively easily doing this. Now this was a bit of an odd one, the um, results we were getting were quite strange, looked initially like a failed DRAM uh, but of course because we were uh, trying different uh, dress ranges and getting exactly the same data coming out um, it didn't seem like it was likely to be a failed DRAM. I haven't actually tested the DRAMs I've taken out, um, but certainly the break that we found in the track and the through hole plating failures uh, would tend to confirm what we were seeing on the logic analyzer. The system is now running. Um, I'll go through and finish testing this. I won't do it on camera. I'm just going to go through the entire system now as it stands, make sure everything works. Seems like it should do, but we now have the system running so I can write a few uh, test programs and thoroughly test the system. Now the reason that the DRAM self-test worked, because there is a self-test for the DRAM built into the ROM, and the reason that seemed to be working is because it's a fairly simple um, self-test. What it does is it writes value of AA to the entire DRAM uh, address range. It then goes back and reads it back and it then writes value of 55 to the entire address range goes back and reads that back and if there are any errors then it flags that as a failure but of course if you do that then the system doesn't know that uh, you haven't selected the correct address you could for example stop it changing the address entirely and it might think it's testing the entire 64k of DRAM but it might only be testing one address the fact it's not switching addresses and doesn't um, get picked up with this fault. So the self-test for example on the Z80 project increments the value it's writing to memory yeah, at each um, memory cell so if um, one particular cell is not working then the test will fail. But this sort of testing doesn't pick this up and again that's another clue as to 
why I thought it might be an addressing problem rather than um, a data problem because the data, a problem with one of the data bits would be picked up with that test but um, addressing wise um, that uh, test will not find any faults. Okay so that's it for this uh, video what we'll do in the next video assuming I don't find any more faults is we'll um, attach the hard disk controller card and we can start looking for the reasons we can't boot from hard disk. We can now boot from floppy of course so that will help us um, in our diagnostics but um, hopefully we've uh, resolved the problem with the floppy drive.